you say something, you say no. All right, welcome back. We're still talking about coronavirus, but this time uh, we are looking at the welfare of our frontline workers. Uh, you could call them, some of them doctors, some of them are security men and women, uh, some of them are nurses, those who attend to people uh, facing coronavirus directly or indirectly. Now, join us to have this conversation on the welfare of our frontline workers. We have a guest via Skype, Baba Femi Famuide, who is a concerned Nigerian. Baba Femi, glad to have you join us on the program. On the program this morning. All right. I, you're a concerned Nigerian. I, I want to know why you're concerned about these frontline workers. We all know that they are doing so much to protect Nigeria in this time of, um, of war. We're fighting an unseen and invisible enemy. Now tell me, why are you so concerned about these frontline workers? And what do you think their welfare should be like or look like? Um, okay, so uh, we all know, we all know current circumstances in terms of in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic and um, we all understand how important and the immediate threat to life that this pandemic poses to the frontline workers and we've had um, instances where where we've heard in the news where you know they've not had adequate um, protective equipment, they've not been properly provided for. And so you would, you would see situations where like, um, for example, um, there's a case right now that um, I know of, of a young man who is a worker with one of our healthcare institutions. And in the course of his, you know, service, has you know contacted um, the COVID-19, and um, not just him alone, but you know he's he's also had other colleagues who have also contacted the um, the, the virus, and so we can see that there's a need for us as a people, as a as a nation, to ensure that we provide the necessary the necessary protective equipment and the, and to ensure that the safety of these welfare workers are looked at adequately now when you ask what do i think should be um the welfare you know package that is is you know is adequate for for our healthcare workers um if we put it vis-a-vis -vis, you know some of the amount of money that you hear our um, those in in government collect for hazard allowance and the likes, you notice that it's peanuts. As as far as I know, and the last that I you know based on my research, I learned that even the current welfare package of our healthcare workers is nothing to write home about. Their hazard allowance is 5,000 Naira a month. Come on, what is 5,000 Naira? Of what value is that to compare to a person's life? These guys are the ones who are at the forefront. It's almost like you're sending your soldiers to the front line of a battle, and you're not equipping them, you're not giving them the necessary tools they need to fight the enemy. And so... Personally, I feel that when it comes to the issue of their welfare, we should be as we, sh we should be as generous as we we ought to. If we place value on their lives and the work they do for us in preventing, you know, in preventing this virus from going from spreading beyond what it has already. And so the danger I'm, in it mo much more. Sorry? Yeah, Baba Femi, I, I said, I'm, I'm happy we're having this um, talk about, frank talk about how much welfare, uh, how much money should go into the hands of the frontline workers. Because just yesterday, the South African government announcing that it was easing restrictions and also 
getting the private hospitals involved in this set. We're going to put nine, uh, when I calculated it, I think it was nine, nine uh, it was about equivalent Nigerian currency, forget around on the dollars, about 350,000 naira for every patient that was admitted into a private hospital. And it included things like radi radiotherapy, radiology, and all of the other things that goes together with one single patient who is admitted into a private hospital for the virus. And, and I'm thinking about the numbers of people. South Africa's got the highest numbers, about over 60,000 people confirmed with the coronavirus. And if you hear the Minister of, of Health in Nigeria speak, or the Commissioner for Health, every time they ask questions about how much the frontline workers should receive in being in harm's way, sort of dodge it. You think the Medical Association, which is the body which represents medical doctors in this country, for example, let's take them and forget about the other guys like Joe Hesu, but take NMA, for example. You think they are shortchanging the frontline workers when they don't push, say, for example, rather than pay us 5,000 naira, we demand 100,000 naira, or put a, put a figure to it rather than just get around nothing at all. OK, so um, looking at it from that you know, perspective, you would, also, you would also agree with me that um, the Nigerian Medical Association on, at various times have had um, um, have you know kept on talking about this issue of not being properly you know enumerated in terms of their welfare enumeration and uh, the likes. But I also you know believe that there's much more that they can do. Um, it wasn't I think it was recently when they had a, an issue with um, the security agencies and the threatening to down tools, you know, if we go that route, it's just, it's just that we need a situation where our, the government understands the importance of certain sectors of this. I'm not saying that all sectors are not important, but in situations where we have now found ourselves, where this pandemic came without anybody, you know, expecting it to come, and it has, you know, exposed us to, you know, to how inadequate our infrastructure is when it comes to healthcare. You would also, you would also agree with me that at this point in time, it's now necessary for this is really the time that NME should be pushing much more for to ensure that things are put in place for both them and their colleagues. Ba Baba Femi, as, as we round off, uh, as we round off, maybe in about a minute, if you can just make it within a minute, it would seem to us that uh, this is something that should have been done even before the outbreak of uh, coronavirus pandemic in the country. So, what is the? We've said that the NMA should come together and ensure that they work towards something. But it's not just about the NMA coming together and pushing for something. It's about the will, the willingness of the government to be able to do what they want. Do you think that the government is ready at the center, perhaps, to uh, bring a reform to the uh, medical uh, in, uh, association in the country to give us the best and ensure that our frontline workers get adequate care that they deserve in, in just one minute, perhaps? So, uh, you know, in a, with the enlightened self-interest right now, where all of them can't go abroad anymore for for medicals and all of that, because of what is happening, the wise thing for them to do right now is to ensure that their reforms are put in place for health, the uh, healthcare sector. And I feel seriously that it takes it takes men who really understand the value of life to do that. If they understand what it takes, and if all of us, if there's if there's a way that nobody is allowed government officials and the likes are not permitted to go abroad to have medicals, then I'm sure that by that time, we will find a way of fixing our healthcare sector. You know, they, pay, they play to the gallery all the time. You know, we saw how the um, speaker and some of their committees, when this whole issue started, how they started, they, brought, they, they wanted to intervene, you know, in discussions and all of that. But beyond that, this should be what is in the front burner right now for us as a nation. That is what they should be deliberating on in the House to ensure that things are put in proper perspective 
and the necessary welfare that that is required by our, right. our healthcare workers is put in place. All right. We are, we are grateful, Baba Femi, for this concern of yours, and we're hoping that all Nigerians will join hands together to uh, push the government to do better for our frontline workers uh, these unprecedented times. Thank you so much, Baba Femi Famuide, uh, concerned Nigerian, talking about the welfare of our frontline workers. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And that's where we draw the curtains today. As some of us are easing out, Shewo is here, I always hear. And uh, we are rowing the boat together, all right? I hope you are still rowing your boat. Let's not capsize, please. <laughs> We're heading back to space. Oh, my goodness. You wore this again. Where's his heart? <laughs> please don't bring his heart wherever it is. <laughs> but thank you so much, guys, for staying tuned. Tomorrow is another day. Uh, join our, the conversation. Uh, remember that you should observe your personal hygiene, washing your hands as often as possible, and using your face masks once you're stepping out of your homes to a public space. You need to protect yourself and the next person beside you. All right, guys. That's the banana. Interpret. <laughs> Have a beautiful sure. week and see you tomorrow. A bento. Right. Bye for now. <laughs>